to get into medicine you have to be so you have to get this really high mark and you're either a absolutely geniusly brilliant or you've got to study your butt off and be a nerd so people who are nerdy who spend all their time studying they don't live life I mean they don't talk to the everyday man they don't have life experiences when others are out partying they're at home studying and as a result they can't relate to people so when someone like me comes along who uh, you know does relate well to the common person and, and stuff they see me as a real outsider and when you're an outsider it's, uh, you know you either get rid of them or you accept them into the fold and you can't accept someone like me into the fold so they've just got to try and get rid of me uh, and it's always it has been that way and it will always be like that way until we get normal people into medicine I can remember thinking I'd love to be a doctor and I'd like to be a surgeon but when I actually did medicine uh, neurosurgery was the furthest thing from my mind but neurosurgery is one of those unforgiving specialties you can't make a mistake I realised that as a student and uh, I didn't want the pressure. I, my father was a real arsehole, a very mean spirited sort of person and so I used to always look to the uh, movie screen or the TV screen for a father figure. So I had all these actors. Uh, so John Wayne was a tough guy, cowboy, but he was, he was laconic and he was sort of uh, uh, the, the silent, strong type. Yeah, I used him as a role model. I failed my exams uh, three times, and I thought, well, fuck that, there's something going, something's not right here, because I, I was studying with all the other guys who were passing, and I was better than them. And finally, my mentor sat me down uh, at a desk like this, and he sat there, and I sat here, and he took his glasses off, and he goes, Charlie, I need to speak to you about the exam. I go, well, I need to speak to you too, because I thought I did pretty well in it, and they still failed me. And uh, he goes, well, let's go through it. I go, well, the pathology? Yeah, no, no, the pathology did well. Uh, well, the anatomy? No, 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 the anatomy did well in that too. And short cases, long cases. And the end of it, I go, well, what the fuck? I mean, I've passed every section, but I still failed. And he goes, look, the college have approached me to approach you. And there are three things that we find uh, unacceptable and you need to change or else you're never going to pass. The first thing is you've got to stop calling people by their first name and you've got to stop telling patients to call you by your first name. And then the next thing is uh, you know you go clubbing a lot and you're always out partying and that just doesn't fit the image of a neurosurgeon. You've got to settle down and we, we think that you'd probably be better off being married. And the third thing is you've got to get rid of the motorbike. Neurosurgeons, whether you like it or not, we have an image to uphold and to maintain and the image is not one of someone who rides a motorbike and calls people by their first name and this and that. And uh, you know, whether you like it or not, that's the image that the public wants and that's the image that we would like you to have. So, yeah. I understood where they were coming from. There's a few times in my life where people have said to me, you know, this is the way of the world, Charlie, you can't change it. But you've got to be honest with yourself. At the end of the day, you've got to like yourself. Yeah, but I didn't feel good about it and I felt like I did sell my soul to the devil. And the same thing here. I came back to Australia, I operated on maybe 20 kids who were told they had inoperable brain tumours. They all did well. But I was pissing a lot of people off. A lot of people. And the president of the Neurosurgical Society of Australasia rang me up at home. And he said, Charlie, you've got to stop doing what you're doing. You've got to stop pissing people off and operating on these kids who are just going to die anyway. And so do you want me to actually tell these families that I can't do the operation, even though I know I can? And he said, absolutely. He goes, because if you don't piss these neurosurgeons off and you get in their favour, eventually you're going to save more lives because they'll refer patients to you. So I go, look, I can't do that. I'm just, uh, I'm sorry, I just have to... If I think I can operate on someone, I'm going to tell them, even if I piss off a lot of people. I teach medical students and I often ask them, why are you in medicine? Half of them will say they're in it for the money, which is very honest of them, but that's very sad. And the other half will say they're in it for the prestige or they were forced to do it, or their parents wanted them to do it. A tiny minority will say they do it because they want to help mankind and they want to help their fellow human being. And uh, so the wrong people are getting into medicine and we're paying a terrible price for it.